So starting from the ego sense, we can actually use this ego sense to come back to our true nature. The ego sense is always busy. It's always trying to do something to construct itself. And this is a process we can look at. And once we look at that process and have some realization of what's going on, we realize it's no different from consciousness. Because the ego sense apparently arises in consciousness. But when we look into it, we realize there's no ego sense. There's only the Supreme Self. There's neither I, nor the world, nor the mind. And the mind in this sense is the ego sense. There's only the Supreme Peace. And this is Nirvana. The sister continued, Nirvana, emancipation, is Nirvana. In peace there is peace. In the divine there is divinity. That's all there is. This is the culmination of self-inquiry. It's not a philosophical statement. Earlier in chapter 4 we've had self-inquiry being described, being pointed out, showing us how we go from ego sense to realization that there's no ego sense. So in this sense, nirvana, emancipation, is also a nirvana, non-emancipation, associated with space and also not so associated. So the first thing, the first sentence then is the realization of nirvana. And the second sentence is the means. And the means is the ego sense and nirvana. It's associated with space. Space is the first of the elements. It's the most subtle of the elements. And then we've got air, fire, water and earth. So contemplation of the elements can point us in the right direction. The direction is normally the concretization of our notions, starting from the essential non-substantiality. Notions aren't substantial, but then we give them substance. Notions of the world. The world is a notion and then we give it substance. So it's coming back, realizing the non-substantiality which takes us to nirvana. So the path is associated with going in the opposite direction to the cognitive process. The cognitive process is a nirvana. And once we realize it, then it disappears. That whole thing becomes redundant. So it's also not so associated with it. So the first sentence here is the realization and the second sentence is how it's realized. When the right understanding concerning the unreality of the ego sense arises, there is no difficulty in enduring attacks with weapons or illness, etc. But when the seed for the world appearance, which is the ego sense, has been destroyed, the world appearance goes with it. There's a self and then there's a perception of an external world. They go hand in hand. Even as the mirror gets misted by moisture, the self is veiled by the unreal ego sense. We identify with the ego sense. Consciousness identifies with the ego sense. If you look at what's identifying with the ego sense, consciousness, then we realize our true nature and we stop identifying with the ego sense. Consciousness stops identifying with the ego sense and consciousness starts identifying with itself once again. This ego sense gives rise to all the rest of this world appearance. When it goes, then the self shines by its own light, even as the sun shines when the veiling cloud is blown away. Just as an object thrown into the ocean dissolves in the ocean, the ego sense which enters the self is dissolved in it. But it's just let go of. It's like previous, it's like old behaviour. Perhaps in the past something was very important to you. Perhaps you're in competition with somebody else, a very passionate competition. 
And as you get older, you realise maybe certain things weren't so important after all. And you're completely free from that past passion. Maybe you were madly in love with somebody. Maybe you were infatuated with somebody. And that infatuation can pass. I think infatuation is quite a good analogy here. Infatuation is all consuming. All our emotions, all our energy, all our attention is focused on one thing, one person. And then perhaps for whatever reason, it might just stop. And it's like you've woken up from something and you wonder what that was all about. So I think it's like an infatuation which dissolves. The infatuation just seems to dissolve. As long as the ego sense lasts, the same Brahman or the infinite consciousness shines as the diverse objects with different names. This is our infatuation. We create notions, we identify aspects of the experiencing depending on the emotions which derive our notions. When this is quieted, when the ego sense is quieted, then Brahman shines as the pure infinite consciousness. The ego sense is the seed for this universe. And that is an emotional thing, the ego sense. Very deep emotions of the level of infatuations. When that is fried, there is no sense in words like world, bondage or ego sense. When the pot is broken, only the clay remains. When the pot is broken, what's lost? A certain functionality, perhaps. But as far as the pot's concerned, what's lost? Nothing. It was only ever clay. When the ego sense goes, diversity is dissolved. Just as the objects of the world are perceived when the sun rises, the diversity of world appearance arises with the rising of the ego sense. O Ram, I do not see any alternative to self-knowledge, which is the realisation of the unreality of the ego sense. It's a choice between living in a dream or not living in a dream. Most people will prefer to live in dreams no matter how uncomfortable they are. Nothing else can ensure your true welfare. Hence, first abandon the individualized ego sense and behold yourself as the entire universe. Everything is happening right here and now. You don't have to imagine this. This is the reality. Then realize that the entire universe is the self or Brahman and not else. Be free from all agitation caused by world notions. Notions of the world.